Hey, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever is going on. You're welcome back to Schoolhouse Cracked. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Marcus Motor Chandler. I'm Brett Derrickson, and we are excited to talk to you about some interesting things going on in the school and the world. So we followed up, Brett, um, or we had an episode uh, a couple weeks back on uh, how do we pay for teacher raises, right? And so that's a question. A lot of folks are supporting teacher pay raises, but where does that money come from? So we covered an episode on that. Check it out if you haven't already. Yeah. And today's kind of a follow-up on that. Um, and it's, it's all kind of over national news and something that's relevant in our home state of Colorado. Um, and, uh, and that is the four-day school week. And a lot of um, uh, districts and states are, are considering this. And here in our home state of Colorado, we have the most number of school districts on a four-day school week of any other state. And it's still a real hot topic for us here in Colorado and, and a hot topic in a lot of other states right now. Yeah, and I think that's just fundamentally, let's just point out, again, we mentioned a lot in our last episode of Teacher Pay, yeah. we are 49th out of 50 states uh, in school funding. I'm not putting my... Four, 48th if you look at a slightly different metric, okay. but not much of an improvement. <laughs> yeah, uh, none, none as far as I'm concerned. No, but the point is I'm not putting down my state. Funding yeah. schools is, is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's uh, complex, um, and I'm not weighing in on that. The one thing I would say, though, is that the four-day work week is born out of that uh, school finance piece. Mm -hmm. It saves money well, in, and, and in so, operations. And so you said something about uh, – you said four-day work week, and so th there's parallel conversations happening here, right? Like we know in industry, in private sector, business, um, there's large conversations about moving to the four-day work week. Um, <laughs> one – is that uh, coming out of the pandemic and having remote work or, or hybrid work environments, um, a lot of companies are, are battling with that back to office mentality or allowing workers to re remain remote. Um, the the, the um, data tells us that uh, work ability or work output didn't change dramatically mm -hmm. in going remote. Um, so as, a, as kind of a, a compromise, many large corporations in the US are moving to a four day work week mm -hmm. with some remote, some in the office. And so the parallel there is now education has to have that conversation simply because in a, a teacher may make the choice to say like, well, I can make this amount of money working a four day week in my school district, or I could work or working a five day school week in my district, or I could go work a four day work week in private industry without all the extra things we know go into teaching, yeah. grading, uh, things after school, things like that. Yeah. Just as an example, folks, uh, my, you know, my brother uh, it works for corporate uh, Toyota USA and that Toyota gave uh, all their departments the choice. Mm -hmm. And the, the choice of working and how to work uh, was a broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, does, it, the teams just had to, and the departments just had to agree upon it. Did you want to work five days and all five days right. uh, at, at the corporate headquarters? Uh, do you want to work uh, half-day hybrids? Do you okay. want to work uh, one day on, one day off, all at home, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah? Do you want to work... Uh, you know, a twelve, uh, a ten-hour day. Well, that's a, I just gotta say, that's a powerful choice to give employees. It is. Like, it and is. then we know in public education, that's not always. The no, case. and yeah. and wherever you're at on on, on these thoughts, uh, whether you're a business owner and, and you and you you, you want to have like Elon Musk wants his employees mm -hmm. in, and there's there's benefits to that. Other people want their employees to live wherever they want to because uh, also the data shows that people who work remotely will continue working sometimes mm -hmm. they actually work more hours than they right, would be right. if they didn't have a punch in punch out kind of yeah, structure but the point is 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 simply that that choice is giving people um the idea to wonder about how they want to work yeah absolutely and, and inevitably all things lead into schools and we've talked about this mm -hmm. schools are a microcosm of our greater culture mm -hmm. and society mm -hmm. um, but one of the things before i get into some of the the di dialogue that's happening stateside is a uh, case in point in private sector in the uk um, they had a, a test, they, and they call it schemes over there. They had a test scheme um, in partnership with, uh, with the government, mm -hmm. and they had 61 large corporations, large organizations, test out a four-day work week um, and determine what, revenue, what happened to revenue, what happened to work productivity, what work happened to work outcomes. Um, and they found no, the companies themselves found no discernible difference. Mm -hmm. And after the, the p test pilot was over, all 61 companies – have stayed with the four-day work week, and that just came out a couple weeks ago. All sixty-one. All sixty-one. All sixty-one. Yeah. So, so we're starting to see the data supporting a four-day work week. If we're not seeing decreased revenue and decreased uh, productivity, um, but what that means is you have to sort out like coverage, right? And in a school setting, that means one of two things. It means kids are physically not in your building, one out of five days a week, and the teachers are, or nobody's in the building yeah. one of those days a week. Yeah. Thoughts on kind of those two alternatives that we're seeing play out now? Oh, well, for me, I, it's, it's pretty hard to, 
to be completely discerning on this because I actually feel like my thoughts as a as a person are different than what I want for our kids in our schools. Yeah, absolutely. And well, explore that. Talk, talk more of that. Well, I, I am going to be exhausted at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. regardless of the day of the week or <laughs> the situation. And I'm going to be kind of hanging on uh -huh. at about 75% of my energy and my intellectual capacity from 1 to, to whenever. Mm -hmm. So if that's for, for Brett Derrickson, I would like to be at school four days a week mm -hmm. <laughs> and not at school on sure. on one of those days so that I can uh, recuperate or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I still haven't done some things in my yard that I'd like to do at this mm -hmm. season and then so on and so forth. Yeah, it's almost time to start seeding and aerating your yeah, yard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we already put the, you know, the seeds inside the, the windows, so we're kind of getting there. We're getting excited yeah. about, uh, you know, our home and our yard and things like that. But the point would be if I wanted to read books or exercise or do anything, the idea of having – uh, another day mm -hmm. uh, is pretty pretty exciting for me. And the other thing is, because my kids and their schedules and different things, I'm also one of those people that often takes off a Friday yeah. because I'm trying to get my kids to an out-of-state tournament or whatever it is, and so there's a lot of personal benefits. With that being said, um, if, if we went to a five-day work week for adults and we had kids attend school for, for four days, um, I also see some, some interesting benefits there. Mm -hmm. I happen to work in a school district, as you know, who has quite a bit of like operational strength, and that's that's just the fact. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. we have a PLC, and for those of you who don't know what that means, professional learning community, which means we get our teachers together in a, a chance to plan and grade and think mm -hmm. to e with each other every single day. That's well, I, I I just have to interject. That's a possibility simply based off of scale of uh, scale of economy, yes. economy of scale, right? It is. It's it, in a larger school that's possible because you have enough teachers to move around. In small districts where the four day school week originated for agrarian reasons that's not always the case it's not yeah. and that's what that's yeah. what i was getting to yeah. is is i can also see how schools and school districts would be like hey if we get if we pack mm -hmm. our learning into four days right. and we have our teachers come in on the fifth day that's going to increase their productivity because their ability to collaborate mm -hmm. and 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 work on school-wide issues yeah, use data to drive instruction there's so many benefits there huge downside though what what do you think now before i get into the what really stresses yeah. me out about this movement what do you think so there's 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 a couple things at play here that i think are worth talking about one is um uh, a competitive job market so if if you're my neighboring school district and you go to a four-day work week and you're paying the same or maybe even slightly less than me as my school district i still have everybody there five days a week inevitably in a competitive market where we know there's a teacher shortage, and we've covered that in multiple episodes, um, uh, uh, one, a younger new teacher will make it a career decision simply based off of that before they even apply it in my district. Mm -hmm. um, second, somebody may be looking to move. If, if your district will honor all my years of service and pay me the same or even maybe a couple thousand dollars less, but I'm guaranteed to have every Friday or Monday off, hell yeah, I'm going to take that Absolutely. job. And, uh, and we're seeing that play out. One, we're seeing that play out in districts – um, in our region and across the country, if we're neighboring districts and you have 185 contact days, I have 185 contact days, you pay 65000 I pay 60000 guess where all the applicants are going? Yes, and now, now you throw in the fact that I work one day less a week, and even if I'm grading papers at home, what have you, I'm not physically going to the, bu going to the building, so that saves commuting costs. Um, I'm home for possible child care reasons. Um, that, there's, there's, that is going to play in decision-making. So one of the things I would say is just – if you're if you're a superintendent out there who's, who's uh, you know rubbing your hands or in worry over this, what's everybody else doing around you? And this is a perfect case of peer pressure because if other people are doing it, you're going to be left out in the woods and you're not going to have those applicants. Right. You're going to have hard to fill positions go unfilled. No, I, yeah. I don't think I don't even think that we are on the brink of how this in a in a competition in economic market sense mm -hmm. is how big this is. Because even if I let's just say. That, those, that, that same thing that you're putting out there, Marcus. I don't have to go in on Friday mm -hmm. or I don't have to go in on Monday. I still have to get my work done, my planning, my grading, all those things. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll go 5000 maybe even $8,000 less mm -hmm. because if I am entrepreneurial, yeah. then I'll, I'll go ahead and work on yeah. Friday. Mm -hmm. I'll do a food truck. I'll join my buddy in his landscaping business. Well, even if you're, I'll even be a if you're just pragmatic and you do the math about how much you spend on gas getting to school, yeah, yeah. It, I bet it's going to be close to about half. Yeah, I'll meal prep. Be, cut, you know, yeah. they're, 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 they really yeah. are 100 and more yeah. ways that you could actually save money or make money 
in that time period, you could you could uh, you know start up a, a small business of any sort. You could be a, a, a realtor Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If you're one of those people that is, yeah. is, is young and just working their tails off, yeah. uh, like we did when we were young. Right. You know, now we're, we're kind of thinking about this from our lens, where we're able to cover our bills and we you know we have a budget and, and we're and we're fine. But back in those younger teacher days, when I had kids. I mean, we put our son into school a year early mm. to save money. Mm. And if you're going to give me an extra day, I'll make money on that mm. extra day. And, and so there's one other thing I want to talk about in reference to this, and we're going to get into the downside kind of of the four-day school week for kids. Um, but here in our here in our local state of Colorado, uh, we have the biggest district in the country on a four-day week, yep. and uh, and that's Brighton School District, um, J27 or 27J, uh, just north of Denver. Um, biggest district, and they went to a four-day week in 2018. Um, and uh, th through their data and research and the superintendent's own words, um, they have seen less teacher turnover, uh, higher recruiting percentages, um, and they have not seen uh, a significant decrease or decline in student achievement. Gosh, I just wanted to learn more about that. I and, and they saved, and, and then just pragmatically, they saved money on uh, building costs, so like heating, lighting, um, transportation costs. And so uh, the biggest school district in, in the country on, on a four-day week is seeing some pretty positive outcomes uh, in regard to just teacher retention, teacher recruiting, um, and they're not seeing the massive decline in achievement that everybody predicted they would they would see when they moved, made that move in 2018. Man, I take that I take that with a grain of salt at this point. Yeah. Not not that not that I'm questioning their data or their their reports mm -hmm. out. I'm just simply saying, like, I'm and this is super anecdotal. I just want it studied more. But I, you know, I was a teacher for 18 years, mm -hmm. and now I've been an administrator uh, for six. And I'm just going to tell everybody. That as a when I taught freshmen, the toughest job was teaching freshmen uh, seventh period or whatever mm -hmm. that end of that period day was. It, 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 they are exhausted. It is an extraordinarily mm -hmm. long day. Mm -hmm. If you are trying to run a school where you're being rigorous and relevant in your curriculum, and we're talking about those minutes starting at and some you know we'll just take a basic one and it goes from eight to three thirty, mm -hmm. and those kids have a twenty five to thirty minute lunch and they have a five minute passing period. What we're talking about is that we've got our teachers all amped up on on greeting the kids, mm -hmm. getting them started, stimulating their mm -hmm. thinking, reading, writing, collaboration, organization, mm -hmm. getting that that wicker in there and all that stuff. They're mentally exhausted. We learned that when we did that empathy study at our high school where we followed kids around all day. We were drained. Yeah, so uh, what Brett's talking about is, um, and this is something I did, I tried to do at least once a year um, in all my leadership positions before I left public ed, was uh, I would choose a student at random, and I would shadow that student the entire school day. I would sit in their English class first period, sit in their science class second period, go to lunch, um, sit in art class and attempt to paint, um, and I would do the I do the same assignments they did. I would uh, and I would just kind of observe the class, observe the student, and then experience that school day on my own. And I will and it is, it is a, an exhausting day. Also, you realize how long kids are sitting in chairs. Yeah. And kids are a little more rubbery than we are as adults. But my back was shot at the end of the day, and I'm I'm in good shape sitting in those awful cheap public education chairs. Um, but yeah, it's 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 mentally exhausting. So I think where you're going with this is if if one of the downsides inevitably that I, I see some school districts doing here is if we go to a four-day week for kids, then we extend the length of the day. Yep. And so it, it, we're all hung up on, in public education in America, the seat time and the calculation on seat time and what's legislated in your state on seat time. Um, and so if we're going to move to five days rather than the day being eight hours now for a student, now the day is nine and a half hours to, quote, make up for that seat time. What are your thoughts on that? I think that I think it's extremely dangerous. I I think it's asinine. Yeah, I do, I, do, I do and, too. And the research globally would yeah. tell us it's asinine, yeah. um, especially in Western European countries where schools yeah. get out at one thirty p.m. We're and, getting, they're, and yeah. they're kicking our asses. Th this yeah. this is absolutely yeah. one of my my biggest. Uh, this is not a schoolhouse cracked issue where we're looking at some uh, crack and wondering how we're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. For me, this is a schoolhouse broken issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm just going to say it. And and maybe it's it's me and how I view the world and how I view kids, but Marcus, you've been in meetings with me. Mm -hmm. What happens after 35 minutes? Oh, you're looking at like the ceiling, paintings on the wall, looking at your laptop, yeah. 
uh, giving me like subtle nonverbals that you want to like maybe hurl yourself out of a third story window. Texting yeah. jokes. <laughs> eventually, it is eventually I start literally even in big meetings, folks. Yeah. It's, it's terrible behavior. If, yeah. if anybody uh, of my colleagues in leadership in our school districts watching or listening to this podcast, they know exactly what I'm talking about. I'll raise my hand in a group full of people who are my bosses yeah. and say something completely disruptive and stupid just mm-hmm. to get a laugh. Such as an innuendo <coughs> about you jarring pickles. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. That was unintentional. There's a lot of jokes there. Yes, <laughs> but there were, that was an unintentional one. But the, the point was, is, is, is fundamentally, um, folks, if you're, if you're a teenager or you ever remember being a teenager, and it's ironic and you're correct, we do call it seat time. We should be measuring what's called learning time or contact time, but in, we do yeah. call it seat Instructional time. Instructional engagement right. time. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. The, the truth of the matter is, is, is that if we extend the school day, we're, we're creating a different problem. We're not doing anything yeah. good for kids. We're solving one problem to create another. Right. Yeah. Uh, even if we had a five-day work, if we mm. continue with a five-day schedule, we still have to somehow find a way to reduce the amount of mm. seat time that is existing within our schools because, yeah. um, you know, it's it's simply uh, killing kids' interests in school. Yeah. And learning. But if you're not interested in school, then we're hurting their interest in learning. Those mm. two things are linked. Yeah. And, and so uh, – and. We, we know this about each other, and this is how we became friends through working together and then ultimately friends outside of school. Um, and hopefully our, our, our listeners know this at this point, but like we, we both are truly kid-centric educators and, and caring about the student experience while they are in school. And so we, there, is some, there is some equity concerns here, obviously, mm-hmm. and, and we're not diving into that fully, but um, the ability for a kid to be home or not be home um, based off, and there's a larger conversation there that we won't be getting in today, but we're not ignorant to, to that and, and what a kid may be doing on that day off. Um, but we're, we're also trying to solve a greater problem in public education with teacher shortage, and, and the, the, the public dialogue is that a four-day school week would reduce teacher burnout, um, increase longevity in the profession, decrease transiency in, in teaching positions, moving between districts, or even just leaving the profession in general. So that that's one positive benefit there. Um, what's interesting, I find, and I, I want to know your opinion on this, Brett, and we haven't talked about this, um, the, the national organizations that support teachers, so like NEA, yeah. National Teachers Federation, or mm-hmm. American Federation of Teachers, um, they, they're not really coming out with a strong stance on this. And, and there's, they're following up with their policy statements of we need better funding, teachers need to be respected more. That's a bit of an aside. Is like how the hell do we create more respect for teachers? Like what legislation, what funding source will do that? That's not an actionable item, and I think it's bullshit. Yeah. Um, but like what, why aren't we seeing more – why aren't we seeing stronger stances on this either for or against? Well, I think they – I think they feel the same way I do is that this is this if we were to do you know that classic T chart or SWOT mm-hmm. analysis you know the, the the benefits and the drawbacks right the the drawbacks are are still kind of undetermined mm-hmm. uh, you know I'll say this from an administrator lens and I, I um, on our way in today Marcus I listened to our, our podcast on uh, on crazy parents. And I, it, we oh, you listened about you listened to your own story about being crazy. Yeah, okay, all right. yeah that's it was, meta. It's right. actually <laughs> really hard to listen to. <laughs> but no, the, okay. the truth of the matter is, we did, we did, uh, I did mostly mm-hmm. flippantly use the word uh, crazy. But mm-hmm. and I made a comment on that podcast that was I, I kind of regret about mm-hmm. um, about mental health flourishing mm-hmm. uh, or mental illness flourishing. But mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll say this: I do worry about my teachers, mm-hmm. um, and I giving them an extra day off. Uh, which is really what we're essentially acknowledging is a day off to recuperate from their job. Mm-hmm. Um, but or, extend- or, or work in a way that best suits them. Right, but yeah. I, I also I, feel like yeah. if we extend the day at mm-hmm. all, mm-hmm. We, we would, I would make this guess, and this is, this is to- totally just me, me thinking, I don't know this, that we're going to see discipline problems go up, mm-hmm. and we're going to see overreactions by teachers, and we're going to see those things that manifest in frustration right. really rise uh, between three and four thirty, or whatever yeah. those school schedules are, because it is an exhausting profession. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd really like for us to take a look at what we learn or know or understand about uh, studying nurses and long shifts, and what mm-hmm. what's the difference between the first six hours of a twelve hour shift and the last six hours of a twelve well, hour it's, shift. It's funny you say that because there there's reasons there are regulations on like how many hours a pilot can fly. Yeah. There are regulations that hospital systems create on how many back to back. Uh, swing shifts an individual can work, or I mean, there's, there's, we we know this from private sector, but I absolutely agree. I think I think if you if you go to a four day school week, and so please, administrator, superintendents, hear this out. Uh, if you go to a four day week, 
for students, but then you extend the day, so you still have, quote, the same seat time. You're solving one problem, creating another, and it's going to be a net – it's net zero. You're not gaining or losing anything anymore. You solve one problem to create another. And ultimately, if, if your district's goal is to reduce teacher burnout, that's not going to solve that problem. Yeah. If, you're, if your goal is to reduce student behavior – it's not going to solve that, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I mean, there are some financial ramifications there. But the thing we haven't talked about is what do students want? Yeah. And, and I'd be – I don't know. If you ask your kids, I think they would all probably unanimously agree that they'd rather go to school four days a week than five days a week because they're all athletes, yeah. and they need that time to compete. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and uh, but I also – I don't know, Marcus. I we come back. There's a, there's a socialization component. I think they that students might feel yeah, they miss out I on. But I'm thinking about your kids. What would they What would they say? Oh, my kids yeah. would a, would absolutely want to go to a four day yeah. week. But they, my kids and and I love them to death, and they're bright. But they don't know at all what's best for themselves. No, that's yeah. and 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 truly, they hate st- the school day. Yeah. And so they think of a school day off as like this equal to. A school day off, but like they a don't snow day. Yes. it's like a snow day every yeah, week. Yeah, great. Who, but on the at the opposite end of it, I can't curtail their schedule to like make sure that their advanced placement classes aren't at the end of the day. Right. And as athletes, that they would have to um, uh, miss, um, you know, AP Chem, mm-hmm. or that they'll, my my middle son that that struggles like me with mm-hmm. learning all day long won't have to take English language arts or whatever challenges them the most mm-hmm. uh, between three thirty and. 445 yeah. like so i can't imagine myself taking math at 330 and i'm i'm oriented towards math and yeah. sciences and i can't imagine trying to take any math at 330 yeah. so yeah. If, if a teacher can't reduce the complexity or the yeah. challenge of the of the content or what they're trying to get kids to learn because of the time of day mm-hmm. that it is i mean I, I think that this this is um without even reasonable thought and i um the things that you're talking about in regard to uh student achievement and some of these uh, other pieces that you mm-hmm. that you look at at Brighton or other school districts that have tried this are looking at it from a, a revenue and an efficiency mm-hmm. uh, uh, lens. And I would I'd like to see a longitudinal study, which we can't predict, ten years mm-hmm. down the road from now. Mm-hmm. Um, let's not just study like student achievement. Let's specifically study student achievement between three and four thirty, mm-hmm. and you know these other uh, other times because I I'm sure that that is off. Well, and we, we have data sets out there that can be explored further because we know districts, especially rural districts, have been on four-day work, four day school weeks forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's worth a, a deeper conversation. And inevitably, this, this conversation between us has been tinted with a bit of privilege, obviously, because we do know that schools are also, in many places around the country, the primary source of, of food for children, yes. the primary source for after-school care and programming. Um, and safety rather than just going home or, or walking through – hanging out at a park for two hours. No, and the trusted, and so, the trusted adult yeah, piece and too. So, ab- absolutely. So you're surrounded by people you know already, you care about, your friends are there, safe environment, you're being fed, you're, provi- you're being provided pro-social activities. Um, so th- that is one of the things that I struggle with when I think about a four-day four week um, is, is that, that we're missing 20% of an opportunity to protect kids. But then I also think most schools don't do that on a Friday anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, I've never worked in a school that provided that level of programming on a Friday, Monday through Thursday. Absolutely. Folks, I don't know how to characterize our the school district that we worked together in or the school district that he worked in prior or that I worked in prior without giving them away in our area. What I will say, though, is they fit that um, a lot of the challenges that urban yeah. schools uh, 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 face. And, and I say that with just just a glowing heart. I love I love the schools that we've worked with and the kids and yeah, families absolutely. that we've absolutely. worked with. But I also will say that from our point of view, uh, not having worked in up or you know suburban, um, uh, you know middle class or upper middle class school districts. That yeah, we haven't worked in those no, wealthy places without no, without the same consideration. Yeah. And so when we yeah. come back from long weekends, folks, or when we come back from like breaks, hey, how was your break? It's not that like it was awesome when we went skiing. I mean, th- there's there is a good. I'm making numbers up here, but a good fifty percent of our kids who are just like thirsty and glad to be back mm-hmm. in our school school is the, their safe place yes yeah. where where the people who are, i'm not even say, we're, i'm not saying we're better than our community i'm not saying that we're that we're smarter than our community or that, that there's anything wrong with parenting i'm just simply saying that in schools these days folks we study kids and we think yeah. about kids and we we memorize phrases and we we do love and logic yeah. and <laughs> you know, we do you know but we we what we've done yeah. well in education yeah. the last 10 years is meet kids where they're at yeah. so we've become the safe place for, yeah, for a lot of kids. And it's not, I, I'm, again, I'm not bashing parents or anything. I grew up in a single parent household and had three older siblings and they, they didn't take great care of me when I was young. So I loved going to school. 
where, where people mm -hmm. were trained to be nice to me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so I, I, I don't see this as having a benefit for children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so that's kind of the, you have the pragmatic side of it, then you have the head and the heart mm -hmm. side of it, which I, even is pragmatic for me. And that would be um, my dare to schools and yeah. school districts. Like, where's the innovation? Like, this, to me, this is not an innovative solution mm -hmm. to teacher retention. If we're having a hard time getting uh, teachers mm -hmm. to stay in our profession, um, why don't we figure out how to make our our our, our organizations worth being in? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I wanna I wanna work in a school or a school district where a teacher wants to come in on a Saturday because they love what they're doing so much. And I know mm -hmm. that that is uh, ridiculously optimistic or, well, or it's romantic, but the point yeah. is, is there's so many other ways yeah. for a school district to compete with mm -hmm. another school district. On, on teachers teacher retention and teacher satisfaction. Well, and so we talked about one of them being pay in our earlier episode, and if you can't increase pay and you can't give them more time, how do you innovate? What do you do? Yeah. So I, I've always said, and you've heard me say this, that if you're going to ask somebody to do something more or extra, you need to give them time or you need to give them money. Yeah. Preferably both. But in this case, we, we're in a position where we can't give teachers either. So, yeah, how do we innovate? So that's the question to you all yeah. at home watching and listening. Um, students, what are your thoughts out there? Would you like a four-day week? Would you like a five-day week? Um, teachers, what is your experience? If you had that extra day off, would you stay in the job longer? Um, administrators, what, what decisions are you looking at here on the pragmatic and the head and heart side of things? So yeah. send us your thoughts, comments, and opinions at schoolhousecracked at gmail.com. Subscribe to us at our YouTube channel on that button right below and leave us your comments. Let us know your thoughts and opinions and download us on all your favorite podcast yeah. channels. Absolutely. And Marcus, just to, just to close out, teachers, um, families, kids, I'm going to challenge you to be on the solution side of this. If we can't give you more time or more money, if we can't do either of those two things, those are, those are really in a mercantile mm -hmm. system very hard to create. Yeah. What is it that's yeah, going to make you, make you want to go to work and, and be proud of your school and your school district? Mm -hmm. uh, give, us, give us something that we can really explore, pull apart, and share with the world. Yeah. So, again, thanks for tuning in to Schoolhouse Cracked. We will see you in our next episode. Yeah.